Chefy Kitchen, episode 9 of Cooking with Chef Garmish. Good morning. Good morning. How, How are, are you? you? Very good. Very, very, very good. good. Very good. Nice to see some lovely summery produce and all season produce. Beautiful. Now we've got some pork, which we haven't done meat here yet. So what are we yes, doing? now uh, we're going to do a, a roasty pork chop with a jus with a little bit of shallots, which we've got in here. Mm-hmm. Lovely. Touch of spring onion. Uh, no cream, a bit of stock. This one, which is for me, yes. is perfect one. Uh, slightly reduced to the glass of pan, top, but go with it, a ratatouille. Lovely. Oh, lovely. You've got some lovely peppers you've seen in here, two colors, onion, aubergine, courgette. One thing which is great with ratatouille, when you make too much, you can serve it the following day, other starters. Cold. Cold. And it's a delight. Or you can eat it, it's even better. So, I think, uh, let's get on. Yeah, let's get on. It should be good. Sounds great. Okay, so great. Now we're going to cook the ratatouille. I already prepared a little bit, as you can see, because you need to get a little bit in advance with that. Red pepper, green pepper, beautiful onion, garlic, which will be chopped with parsley to put at the end of it. We always put the persillade at the end. Courgette, and now the aubergine, which I've just already peeled. So when you peel the aubergine, it tends to be, to be black a little bit. So best to have is just quickly pass a small uh, a bit of lemon on it so it doesn't change color. Okay, so we just cut it uh, in, in a bit of pieces like that. You don't want to cut it too small, otherwise you're going to end up with a puree and that's not what you want. Okay, the thing with ratatouille, you always want everything to stay a little bit as um, as a whole, not as a whole, chunky. But as chunky, yeah. Uh, and uh, because otherwise it's not the same, you don't want to puree, it's simple, okay? So like that, okay? Lovely, and we're going to start cooking everything there. So I'm going to bring things over in here. Let's, let's move that across. That's another part. Look at that. Beautiful colors. And what I like is ratatouille, like I said earlier, it's all the colors and the fact you can re-eat it. Love it. I think that's a really good thing. Right, here we go. Olive oil. So olive oil, when you put the olive oil, you, and you put, therefore, say quite a lot, that should do me for the whole lot. When you're going to put the aubergine like I do, like that, okay, you're going to realize that the aubergine is pumping all the oil. So we know that by fact, yeah? So don't keep adding too much and too much because after that, when the aubergine start to release the oil and you keep putting it and putting it, at the end of it you will have really fatty ratatouille. No. So put enough at the beginning and you can see oh, it's all already disappeared. So, but because they pump enough olive oil now, they can roast. So that's what we're going to do. Let them, let them roast, okay? A touch of seasoning. Already, already, always season a little bit my weight from the beginning. But when you do so, you only put a little bit. Because you can never remove salt, but you can add salt. Remember that, so it's only a little bit. Like that. That's all for now. And after, obviously, we will check it. But everybody normally loves ratatouille. It's such a great summer thing. You can eat it cold, you can eat it warm, you can put it on the lunch table, I mean, you can serve it at its own, you can serve it with fish, it goes quite well as well. Uh, with corn, it goes very well. Pan pan roasted corn, it goes very well with plaice, with uh, monkfish, with sea bass. I mean, it's so versatile. Or on its own, on a lovely croton bread, which is toasted, a sourdough, for example, and after you grate it with a little bit of fresh garlic, and you put the corn ratatouille from the day before, reheated slightly perhaps, but warm on the bread. And that's a fantastic lunch. Glass of rosé, I come with you to eat in your plate, guys. Eh? Okay, so you can see now we've got a, a kind of a beautiful color started. So we didn't add any more things. Now we put the onion. Some people put the onion first. Me, I put the onion after the aubergine is roasted. Because if you put the onion first and you put the aubergine, because there is already the onion, you don't have this color on the aubergine. Unless you put a pan on the side and you saute the aubergine and you add them at the end. So everybody's a bit different. Huh? I like to do that, like that. You can see the smell, you can see. I, I always say you can see the smell. People maybe don't. I see it, I put a drop of oil and I'm going to add 
soon the peppers as well. Like this. Wow, look at that. Already the smell is coming on. Peppers. Yeah. I love those dishes. Already you change the color. Yeah. Yes, and now uh, the courgette, and we're going to cook. Actually, courgette, you can wait a tiny bit because there's the one which are quite tender. I'm going to cook very fast. So, here we go. And you realize now I haven't yet covered. Uh, it's because I don't want yet to have the condensation and the release of the water. I will wait to do that when the courgette are in because also, if you do that too early, don't forget the courgette is nearly 80% water. So, by doing so, on top of your condensation and the liquid you're going to form, you're going to add the liquid of the courgette. Suddenly, it's going to be a little bit too wet. So therefore, you will have to take the lead and reduce. So, considering all this kind of uh, nonsense, let it roast a little bit more in here without having condensation. Then you put your courgette and you do not quite close it like that. You let it open so it is evaporation. And that's what casserole cooking is generally. People tend to always close too early and have too much condensation, therefore too much water in your dish. Very important to, to remember that, okay? Okay, so the color become a little bit translucent. You can see that now it's all cooking and softened and there's no liquid at the end of the pan because we didn't cover. Now we can put the courgette like this, okay? To give a good mix, let the courgette Cook a little bit and release the own water, which will then straight evaporate. So we still have a dry thing. And after we're going to cover two thirds to have this beautiful mix. And that is perfect. Okay, so I leave it like that. And sometimes what I do when I cover, I just do like that. So it gives me a little bit more evaporation. Otherwise, you leave your lid like that. So you can get a little bit of condensation and some evaporation so you don't have a swimming pool at the bottom of your pan, which is very important for ratatouille. Although it needs to be soft, it doesn't need to, to swim, if you know what I mean, okay? So, not, not quite yet, in a couple of minutes. Uh, in the meantime, while that is cooking slowly, I'm going to do a persillade. What we call persillade is eye and parsley together, chopped thinly. And when we do a ratatouille, especially in France, or we, my mom used to do it, when the ratatouille is ready, really nice, flavored, tasting well, seasoned well, we threw a fresh garlic and parsley at the very last minute. You've got this really burst of fragrance of garlic, which I love, obviously. You know I love garlic, I'm as French. And you've got this, oh, it's just good. You need to try it. Okay, so garlic. This is really, really fresh garlic, this one. I love this, it's nearly nothing to take in the middle. If I, if I take that like that, for example, I might only get, you see, nothing. So that's fine. It's a good fresh garlic. So what I tend to do with my garlic, instead of chopping, I press in here. Like this. Okay, and after that, with your knife, you press. And that's your garlic. Chop. So you don't need to cut your finger. Okay, so you take a good knife like this and you press on the corner. You can hear the noise. Okay, and after you press your knife there and you crush it. Wow. Et voilà. Boom. Okay, so we're going to do that one more. Okay. And press and bring it up to you like that. And because this garlic is super fresh and very nice, you can see it doesn't blacken yet, which is great because sometimes garlic do become black. So when it's like that, you put a drop of olive oil and you can keep a chopped garlic in olive oil for a couple of days, by the way, just in case you do a little bit more and you want, like we call a mise en place, that's mean to have a little bit uh, of some left, you can use that. Now parsley, me, I like to use the stem of the parsley. There's a lot of flavor in it. People tend to smooth that in a bean. There is no reason why we should. So you just gather against your knife like this, you just do a kind of a ball, which make it kind of easier to cut, you see, from what I'm doing. There, suddenly, up, 
and after that you just hold it quite firm. The knife needs to go against here, a little bit in diagonal so you don't cut your, your nail. And you cut slowly, you don't need to go fast. Okay. Like this, be careful your finger, like I do. And don't worry, chef, just cut the fingers away. So now you've got that, you're going to bring that towards in here, and you're going to, so hold it like that. Always have a good knife, and you lift it slowly, and we're going to make what we call a persian. So they're going to mix both together. You just bring back everything together, you cut, bring back everything together, and after that you take the excedent on side, on that way, don't go under your knife. Okay, so please, because otherwise your finger will go. And you do the same, and you have a beautiful fresh persillade. Same again, if you want to do a little bit more, add it and put in a small dish or that one, you add a drop of olive oil, and you can keep that like almost you do with pesto. But only for a couple of days, eh? because eventually it will change color. Voilà. This is a beautiful persillade. Don't forget, do that that way. Don't cut yourself. Okay? So that we're going to put at the last minute in the ratatouille, and it's going to give you a burst of flavor, which is going to be amazing. Right? So, you can hear. Fabulous. Cooking well, it's not burning, it's just coloring. Yeah. And we're going to close the lid now, so we're going to have this beautiful burst and release of a little bit of juice, that's what we want. So, uh, heat, medium heat? Medium. Uh, this one was quite high at the uh, beginning, yeah. right? uh, on my solid top in here, it's nearly 240. Yeah? Okay. So, yeah, so I'm going to just reduce it in here. Do 150 for that, and I put the pan a little bit on the side, let it cook. Okay, it lets that drip, that's what the, the water, you see, from the condensation. That's what we were talking about earlier. And you can see now it's starting to be a little bit wet, and that's what we are talking about. Look at that, the liquid is coming. But in the same time, we keep the ratatouille not too wet, so look, the colors start to come. You can see the vegetables are all, you can check, they're not in puree, you don't want that, ratatouille should not be. So we need a little bit more cooking, so in between that, we're going to put a touch more again of seasoning, and a touch more of salt. Like I said, salt, you can add salt, but not remove. So be always careful. That's it, okay? And uh, so the next time we opening that, we're going to put this fresh persillade in it, leave it to cook on the side. By the way, talking about ratatouille, more it is cooked and reheated, better it is. It's one of these casserole vegetables that when, when you reheat and you cook slowly for a long time, that's why all the flavor are mixing together. The trick is to try to keep it, then all the vegetables still, you can see them as a channel a little bit, okay? We're going to cut the pork chop in here. I put a, a touch uh, of sunflower and a nut of butter there. And you can see it started forming. That's what you want when it starts forming, but not burning. And the reason we put the oil is to prevent butter from burning. But you still have to control it, obviously, because uh, when butter burns, it's not good for you. So let's not do that. And we're going to roll this pork chop and we're going to make a jus with some shallot, garlic, spring onion, and a little bit of mushroom and a little bit of stock. Just simple, no cream, no nothing like that, uh, we don't need. And the herbs on that will be a little bit of parsley as well, so it goes with the ratatouille, okay? So uh, I don't need, you can see, look, that's what we call when the butter is forming. This is exactly what we're looking for. And now we're going to put this in. And we're going to pan roast. And I like to use uh, Le Creuset, you can see, <laughs> I use that, because I like cast iron, because the, uh, the, way, the way the heat is, or a heavy pan, a heavy non steam pan, because the heat distribution is very different, it's kind of regular, although on the induction sometimes you've got the middle part of the induction who, who does a little bit more work than the rest. 
but generally speaking, it's perfect and it's thick enough. And it should be give us a good color and it will not curl because we cut with a small um, kind of ligament, uh, a small tire. Yeah. Okay, look at that. So that's it. We're going to turn it. Should be a lovely color. That's what we're talking about. Wow. Beautiful. And now I'm going to screw in a little bit of the thing. I always do that. That's the way I cook at home. It is not necessarily the way people would cook in restaurant, but we're doing a nice simple cooking with great ingredients to go with this beautiful ratatouille uh, and vegetable come from four seasons. So that's what we're doing. Mostly, you can see I made a mix with some garlic, shallot, and spring onion. So I put that in here and I let it like that only to soften. And after that, only I will remove this, put on a tray, keep it warm and deglaze the pan. Push the heat a little bit. It's been medium heat so far? Yeah, but it's about me, medium, yeah, medium, medium, medium too high, medium but high. yeah, try to keep that the batter doesn't go. That's all. But the batter is there to give also a color to the pork, as you can see, a beautiful color there. So that's what we should have. Okay? So voilà. I'm going to put that to rest in here, very jar here, which you add a bit of the stuff. So this is the True and Foods chicken stock? Yes, I love this all produce. Four seasons. Why all the chefs buy it, it's made by chef. It's perfect, it's like the classic way of making sauce we used to do. And uh, what is good with the chicken, funny enough, uh, it's quite versatile and go with everything, you know. So, but you can have the beef, you can ask for, for especially in an archway, they make for the lamb, they make uh, chicken, uh, beef, uh, beef, jus, veal, etc. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, okay. So that's going to take off the, all the suck of the, of the, of the meat from the bottom. And we're going to push it and reduce the sauce. Boom. And after that last minute of the, I'm going to rest it in the oven a little bit, this one. And I'm going to use the juice from that to put back in the pan. Et voilà. In the meantime, let's have a look at the ratatouille, the way it's going. So, let's check as well the juice, yeah. All the liquid from the lid. Uh, now it's starting to, to take shape slowly there. You can see everything is now getting softer, which is perfect. So, I'm going to now put this beautiful persil in, like we said, and I'm going to cover it and leave it for a while and it's going to give a flavor which is tremendous. You see, here we are, that's a proper French home ratatouille, which could be actually perfect for brasserie or everything. What I need in here, it's a little bit more salt. You can see that, you haven't seen that. A little bit more salt in here, okay? And uh, and uh, so, like I said, uh, and a touch of black pepper. Again. Perfect. So, cover, leave on the side. Look at the sauce reducing in here, so we can do two things together. And we'll have a dish which will be perfectly ready together. So it's seen quite hard, I drop it a little bit like that, slowly. And uh, I think we're going to eat like king. What do you think about that? Mm. So we're almost there, just a couple of minutes, and the ratatouille is made, you can see. Huh? Uh, it's important for you, so it's all, you can see all the veg. This is the important as well, that you can see what you have cooked, but it's already cooked. And like I said, the persillade last minute to give maximum of flavor and check your seasoning. So that's ready and not wet. I didn't want that to happen. I don't like when it's too wet. So sweet, you see. So we're nearly there. Next time you see us, it will be on the plate. Okay, so here we're ready. Pork chop. Jus from the pork where you can see I just put fresh parsley last minute and that's going to give straight away a burst of flavor within it. Ratatouille, you can see in here. Beautiful, beautiful. And now, so one thing final with ratatouille. 
it's always very difficult to make ratatouille for one or for two because you don't have enough quantity to make the flavor if i make sense to you because when you do single portion and some single uh, people will understand that or chef who eat quickly or they, you know what i mean by that you need the quantity to make the great flavor of it so here we are in here lovely pork chop let's just serve a little bit of ratatouille there and all those beautiful veg from four season are actually stunning and what was nice as well the the red pepper especially as well was really thick really gorgeous sauce we're going to drizzle some of the sauce on it like that we'll take my cloth because it's a little bit warm okay some garnish we made earlier okay, so that's what we said Okay, let me use a lot around. Yeah. Okay, very simple. Let me clean that. And we're making home cooking, yeah? so don't, don't uh, you know, home cooking or, or brass with food or uh, when somebody, you go in a restaurant, you got a dish of the day today, pork shop with ratatouille, as an example. Okay, good ingredient always. This is what we've done today, simple, gorgeous. Mm -hmm.